Hi Aquarius, so welcome to 2021. <coughs> if you add up the numbers of this year, you will see that it adds up to five. So there are lots of changes that are going to be happening. Um, I think this is a, a year of change, of shift, of shift toward a a different mindset, a mindset that uh, directly opposes the mindset that we've been living amongst, I, at least for the past three years because of the change of Saturn into Aquarius. But I think it's it's been longer than that, perhaps maybe since the last shift or the last time Saturn was in Aquarius. <clears throat> so what is that shift? What's that significance? Um <sighs> With all the Aquarian energy swarming around, it will definitely be to directly confront the tenets and ethics that we have accepted to be profitable, attainable, um, popular, um, the status quo, right? It, any, anything that we have developed along those tangents will also be brought into question. Um, simply because Aquarian energy looks for something different. It looks for a different solution. And it challenges the current mechanisms to see, especially with Pluto still in Capricorn, what is not kosher? You know, what is, what is uh, morally, ethically, karmically faulty? So... As we roll into 2021, there is a propensity, I think, for Aquarians to feel really good and be kind of happy about uh, the way the world is moving because it is, it's ready to be shook up. And it is. And with the cards that I'm looking at on the table, I have to say, Aquarius, this energy that's swirling around you right now is beautiful. Um, this is a this is a reading of abundance and prosperity, but there is a but, and it's because of what do we do with the the abundance and prosperity? I think to you know one of the most major uh, shifts in ethics and morality when um, the Puritans decided to leave England or were forced to leave England and, and moved over to the Americas and insisted upon religious freedom, which was a very new avant-garde thought process. And, you know, it would be very Aquarian in its, in its nature in that it was very avant-garde, very new. It rebelled against the norm where the norm up until that time, where there had to be religious conformity and religion was directly married to governing bodies. <clears throat> it was, it was uh, religion and government was the same. So the concept to have religious freedom, not just religious freedom of individuals, but religious freedom, freedom, uh, in, other, in other words, the government itself being free from religion was very avant-garde, you know, something that nobody really had tried before. And I must say, early Americans got it all fucked up. They got it wrong. <laughs> because when most, especially coming from like the Puritan traditions and then the Quaker traditions, um, what most of them meant by religious freedom was that we're free from your standards. We're free from your religion. We're free to run our religion, but they didn't really respect everybody having religious freedom. It's just like, what I have, I'm free to do. But you're still restricted because now I have the power. So my question for you right now, my, my one caveat, my one red flag on the play, if you will, is what will you do with this newfound fortune? What will you do with this newfound luck? Will you just turn it around to become a tyrant the same as you fought against? Or will you move things and change things to actually liberate and, and, and bring in something new? And do I say this? 
I say this uh, generally, you know, not just to you, because certainly not you <laughs> deciding everything for governments around the world, right? But in terms of your own life, the abundance and prosperity that is absolutely coming in and i'm going to share the cards with you they'll blow you away it's just something that's going to stay around for a while abundance and prosperity specifically that you're going to be giving yourself because that's that's another caveat these days is that the abundance the prosperity the aha moments the awakening is all um dependent upon um, making the decisions or making the moves and taking the chances that will bring that abundance your way. So <clears throat> I say to you, I pose this um, question. First of all, what moves do you have to take? We're going to find out a little bit here and then we're definitely going to go deep dive into asking that question specifically in the tarot card reading. That's the extended reading, so that link is down below. Um, so what exactly are the steps that I have to take as an Aquarian to make sure that my abundance is assured? And then what do I do with my abundance when I get it? Not in terms of other people, like as soon as I get it, I got to give it away. No, but in terms of do I let it change me? Do I let it make me into not somebody that rebels against and questions and moves and changes things and constantly works toward improvement and um moral or so i would say more aquarian energy ethical uh, ethical enlightenment or do i just sort of like let myself be contented and pat myself on the back and say well i'm fucking wonderful and i'm fucking amazing and now the world is mine and shut the fuck up bitches do what i say because that's not really changing, right? It's changing who gets the abundance, but it's not really changing the morality or the ethics behind the abundance or how the abundance is, is distributed or how it's earned. Or is it really a change at all? And I think that th that's really what Aquarian energy is really challenging, is have we really changed at all? Just because different people are rich now than the older people doesn't mean that anything's really changed. There's been a shift from have to have nots, but there's still have nots. They're just on this side now, you know? <clears throat> That's the real question is has the real change really happened? And so that's what your challenge will be in all these, this abundance is have I really changed? Has there been real change in my life? You know, um, because abundance, like 3D resource abundance, which is beautiful and wonderful, um, is usually the outcome of a lot of phenomenal changes that you've made to your life, which is really lovely and wonderful. Um, how do we keep those changes as a staple to who we are? That's really it. So that, that in five years, 10 years, we don't turn around and realize we've just become part of the problem right um and so how does that pertain to your life specifically well first of all let's start out with the yummy stuff there is some abundance that's coming in here some good news that's gonna stay it's gonna remain you know um this this is beautiful energy these cards are better than the clover these cards together it's just like this is this is movement in progress that's gonna stick around it's gonna stay for a while so now what that is an outcome is and i'm assuming is that you changed, you shifted, or had gone through a lot of shifts, even dark nights of the soul, Aquarius, where you shifted your energy to create a permanent change in yourself that then created permanent changes in your life. And now, because you know it very well, it takes the 3D world a long time to catch up. Now it's finally catching up. And I was specific and I asked the quick cards, well, how for Aquarius is it catching up? Well, number one, and I'm swear to God, these cards just blatantly fell out. Happiness, happiness. And you see that this is about family. The puffin is a family bird too. Family, friends, abundance, having the people you love around you, being able to support and care for the people that you love, being supported and cared for by the people that you love, having a balance, having um, a, a beautiful harmony 
in your family life, in your home life, in your emotional life, feeling a beautiful stability that other people might envy and look upon and, and want and desire because everybody desires something after it's been accomplished, right? Nobody desires things while it's being built because nobody likes the dirty work. But this is the outcome of dirty work. This is the outcome, and I don't mean dirty as immoral, I mean dirty as in hard work. You worked hard, right? So this is beautiful abundance, a lot of happiness, friends and family around, happiness, beautiful. And then that's not the only card that came out. Abundance here, and when we get a white buffalo abundance especially, it's spirit gifted 3D abundance. This is spiritual abundance, like a connection to spirit, a connection to enlightenment, understanding, um, realization, um, um, learning, becoming better, a better aspect of yourself through connection to spirit. Um, but it's also, uh, like Buffalo represents 3D abundance, three, like, so that could be money, resources, etc., etc. That has been basically gifted by spirit because ultimately you're aligned with spirit. You worked hard. You aligned to spirit. You worked hard through spirit. You have a lot of trust and you have a lot of faith in what you're doing right now. So you're in high vibrational state. You're aligned right now with your soul. You're speaking truth. Now that's going to bring major abundance regardless. But this was a big old caveat. And this was what I didn't understand, this card. Keeper of Secrets. This is aloof. This is a very aloof energy. This, instead of overindulging in being flat out there for everybody to see, this is keeping secrets. This is, this is privacy, garnering, wanting more privacy. So I didn't know if this was a good thing, as in to not overindulge in all, like, being somebody else's, you know, as other people envying you or wanting to be you or wanting to, you know, just like throwing yourself in the spotlight all the time. And instead of being humble and remaining, not that you're not accepting your abundance, but that it's almost like in some ways you're distancing yourself from it to manage it responsibly, but to not let your head get completely evaporated by it, which is very smart energy. And that's one of your secrets that you're keeping is I'm maintaining this by not letting it now devour me. I'm going to be, I'm going to be the big thing here by maintaining the spirituality that I've developed, the happiness and togetherness that I've developed. I'm going to maintain that, right? I'm going to maintain that by making sure that I don't, I don't let myself explode with any kind of like overstimulation, right? I'm going to remain aloof. But it could also be that now, as soon as I start receiving abundance, I start trying to lock it down. I start getting scared of losing it. And that's the red flag that I want you guys to stay away from. That mindset of, do you don't have to be afraid of losing it because you gained it through spiritual connection. So now what you have to do is maintain it simply by maintaining what it is that got you here, which is connection to spirit and, and vibrating in your honesty and vibrating in your truth and living at your life out loud and being sincere and essentially not letting everybody else devour you by being a part of them, but instead still in some ways hovering up just behind them and to see people's reaction. Silently observing. Because this does also imply that there is still some, some more to learn and more to know and more to do. And that's another thing that I wanted you to say. Baby, you got to drop it. Not drop it as in give up. This is the time to drop the, re the record. It's like, it's like, that's what I heard when I, when I heard this. It's like, drop your record. Like, you, my record's about to drop. My single is about to drop. That's what I heard. So that's what it really means, Aquarius. It's about, this is your opportunity. You gotta drop it. You gotta, you gotta drop that, that resume. You gotta drop it now. You gotta put it in front of somebody. You know, that, that, um, that manuscript. You gotta drop it now. You gotta put it in front of somebody. Now is the time to drop it. This is the time 
to take the chance to openly say, it's ready, I'm ready. It's the time to drop it. Dare to be happy by being courageous. You ha And this is the, the caveat. Remember I told you about having to take the action? Having to take the next step? This is it. Being brave. Dare to know that this is the time for my success. Dare to trust all of the energies and the powers that be that are telling you that this is the time. Dare to trust it because it is. It's the time. It's the time. I want to see you be brave, Aquarius. Step away from the crowd. This is the time when you leave the comfort of home, the comfort of everywhere else, and you allow yourself to move on and do that solo work, that scary work, because now you don't have the crowd behind you, you know? You don't have your fucking cheer squad. No, this is the limb that you have to now go out on your own <clears throat> not in arrogance I got this I'm good all by myself I don't need y'all anymore no 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 knowing that thank you for your support you've bought me this far now I take the strength that you endowed in me and I use it to go out on that limb and demonstrate what I know and what I have you know, it's like, it's like now I'm ready to be at the pinnacle where I stand alone while I stand out in the open by myself, but I really stand upon all the resources and support that I have, I have gained by others. So here we have hold your vision, right? A sense of you're only halfway there. It feels like you're all the way there. But you're only halfway there because where you are right now is really just a new beginning of a new phase of your life that's going to be bigger and full and complete, right? So this is a sense of you're there. It, it's, it's like a halfway point. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. The answers you need are coming. This is Gemini energy. So this tells me that you're waiting on news. You're waiting on a message from somebody or waiting on feedback, waiting on communications. And honestly, it's coming in, but you have to do it first. So in other words, don't wait. That's what the cards are saying, don't wait. <coughs> if you want feedback, basically you're gonna have to ask for it. You're going to have to take the first steps. You're going to have to um, make that email first. Like I said, you're going to have to drop it. This is the time to drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Not as in give it up. Let it drop. Let it go. Let it, like, put it out there. Put it out there. Let's go into your animal totem cards. Whew. I am sick right now, so I apologize, Aquarius, for all the craziness. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about my health and my situation right now, because um, you're wondering, I will include all of that very personal information in the extended um, with your um, with your extended reading. Um, so that's just an F FYI. <coughs> spirit guide, spirit guide, animal coded messages for Aquarius, Aquarius, Aquarius. And I don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer here because I'm not. I want to see you. So I, I, I'm sure I'm certain of your success. I'm certain of it. I'm absolutely certain of it. I guess what I'm unsure of in general is just the, the level of, I think, uncertainty in general right now. Seeing, okay, but who do I trust? We need something new. We all need something new. And this is the energy that I'm channeling right now. We all want something new. We're ready for something new. But it's hard to trust anything new. Because everything starts as something new. And then it becomes the same old, same old. So how do we keep it from being the same old, same old? 
Or is that just the way of things? What was once new becomes old. Eventually, you can't preserve it or keep it new. You have to allow it to age and mature and run its course. And when one things run, I think the big problem is, if you'll allow me for a second, is that when we try to keep things in that new stage and we try to say, well, it's never gonna change from here. That's actually greed. And that actually causes a lot of suffering and a lot of imbalance. It's like you're starting on your new path now. 20 years, 30 years from now, you'll be the old thing and you'll have to make way for a new thing. Like that's the natural ebb and flow. We can't decide to always remain the new hot thing. And I think that that is the new old thing that we have to remember is the flow of life, the, the circle of life. You know, and, and ultimately I feel like that's the Aquarian energy. That's really what Aquarian energy is really trying to make people understand again. Right? Is make way for something new. We've, we've spent too much time hovering on what was new 30, 40 years ago. It can't be that way anymore. Make fucking room. But ultimately break the cycle of trying to preserve and hold on to being that new thing. When all you're doing is caking yourself with makeup and pretending. We have to actually allow room for new things. Something's got to be old. And it's like that's the philosophy that's coming back. That's re-emerging. It's, it's an enlightened understanding, connectivity to the universal and the natural way of things. Which I think Aquarian energy is really trying to push. Right? Really trying to remind people of. <laughs> but let me know in your comments. You'll let me know. Aquarius. 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 I'm just getting these channeled messages, guys. So this is wonderful. Um, two Only two animal totems came out, and they're huge. They're both Cancerian. Magic works through you. This is Scarab Beetle, which is transformation. Transforming from something that is 3D to something that is ethereal. Something that is bigger and larger than because it's part of the total. It's not, it's not glutting itself. It's dissolving itself into the everything. So this is universal wisdom. This is also transformation of life itself. Going from that life and death stage to um, eternal life. Eternal, eternal abundance. Um, a higher sense of abundance and awareness, uh, spirituality. And be at home. Being at home in these very um, old concepts. That's why I said like a reemergence of something old as something new. This is Egyptian. So, so essentially way back when, I say this is Cancerian energy because the Egyptian symbol for cancer was the, was the scarab beetle. It wasn't the crab. And it was a very transcendent energy, a very, uh, one would think of it as scorpionic energy, but it wasn't, it was Cancerian energy. And it was a sense of bringing new life, bringing something new that is familiar, bringing something new into the world that is familiar somehow. It's like returning home is the something new, if that makes any sense at all. <coughs> Let's get into your angel messages. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. Um, click that like button and uh, share if you really like this video. Share on your social media profiles. I'd really appreciate it. Also, ring that bell so that you know when I upload all of the content. I upload about 12 to 13 videos a week. Um, uh, Aquarius-specific uh, readings and messages come out every Wednesday. But... You have a sun, moon, and a rising sign, and you may be curious about all different kinds of zodiac readings, so um, please do check it out. I have some uh, pick a cards on my channel as well, so uh, enjoy. Also, there's always an extended. That link is below, and you can go and subscribe to that platform too, which will give you access to the extended videos about a day before the link comes out here on YouTube, and it also gives you access to... Um, 
the astrological forecast that I do every single week discussing the general uh, cosmic energies that are impacting us all um, that's over there for free and, and I also I also debut that on my Instagram page so please join me on Instagram born underscore without underscore boundaries where I do live readings as well so uh, I'm not doing live readings or personal readings right now brief message um, because uh, I don't feel good so um, that's that's all um, all, that's all not happening until further notice, but I will, of course, update you guys, too. Um, let's look at your angel messages. Yeah, thank you for your continued support of the channel, Aquarius. Hold on. So, two more cards fell out. Do it now. What did I, say? I remember I said like these angel messages are like the angels listening and just just not repeating the message but confirming don't put it off any longer and I just saw five 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 and five was a major number that I I, I, I had drawn my attention to in the beginning of this reading so don't put it off any longer. Have courage. Listen to your intuition, for it is the kiting voice of your soul. Do it now. Do it now. This is the time. Destiny. What more two perfect cards in a row? Wow. Your destiny is to blossom, to shine, to transform to an ever greater light. Yes change life is a journey it would be very unfulfilling if each step was exactly the same as the last because life is always changing it is forever fresh and new allow your life to unfold gracefully be grateful for what was is and forever will be wow Positive outcome. The sun is about to burst through the clouds and you will soon see things in a different light. Something that previously seemed hopeless will soon be filled with nothing but hope. Inspiration. A new idea comes to you like a gentle whisper inside your heart. Listen and take action. This is inspiration from high above and with that we're going to get specifics like I promised you early on please click the link below because I know you want to know I'll talk to you guys next week or I'll see you in the extended I should say I'm sorry see you there